Didn't see you there. Welcome to the best arcade ever. I've mentioned before that I'm quite an avid arcade goer, with me going to places so far like uh, Odaiba Dex, which had the awesome retro arcade, or the ever so crazy Anata no Warehouse in Kawasaki. I've been to a lot of the arcades within Tokyo's main areas, and a lot of them are pretty much the same. Not to say that's bad, but I do like a bit of variety. That's where I take interest in these more quirky arcades. They're not really well documented online either, so there's a bit of surprise and suspense at what games they could actually have. What I do to try and find more unique arcades is I would search the internet in Japanese, hoping that Japanese people had actually done something similar to me and looked for little arcades here and there. Recently, I had a stroke of luck and I actually found a Japanese Twitter user that did exactly that. He went to all sorts of arcades and took a few pictures and listed what sort of games they had there. So I had a browse through his Twitter all day long and I tried to find an arcade that I thought would be awesome. As I was scrolling, one caught my attention in particular and it was a picture of an F-Zero AX arcade machine. Now these are pretty rare. So then I had a look at where it was, and surprisingly enough, it was at a Round 1 store. For those of you who don't know what Round 1 is, it's a huge amusement center that can be found pretty much everywhere in Japan, and it contains all things fun. They have things like darts, table tennis, karaoke, claw machines, regular arcade machines, you name it. The round one in question in this tweet was in a place called Seven Park, which is about half an hour north of Tokyo from Nippori Station. Now, there's no direct train station to Seven Park, but what you can do is you can take a train all the way to Kashiwa Station, and when you get there, you can board a bus, which is another about 10 to 15 minutes, and then you'll get straight to Seven Park. First of all, Seven Park itself is pretty amazing. It's a huge shopping complex that has just about everything you could ever want. I spent a while exploring the whole shopping complex and found some cool food and shops. The highlight in this shopping complex though was definitely the massive size confectionery. So I was just walking around the mall and I think I may have shrunk in size because everything around me is massive. Ever felt like sitting on a fruit drop? Well, here you can. Maybe you're a bit more of a Pocky fan? You can stand in front of that as well. This makes for some great photos. Now, onto the main show. I entered round one at Seven Park, and when I went in, I was immediately disappointed. All I saw was everything that I see in every other normal arcade. Your claw games, the modern games, the gambling games. Yeah, I was a little bit disappointed. Um, and then I just had this sad kind of feeling that maybe they'd recently renewed, and they got rid of all the good old stuff. I had a look on the map to confirm, and while the first floor was entirely arcade, I also spotted that they said there was some sort of arcade on the third floor, but this was blocked by an area known as Spotcha. So I decided to go investigate. So as it turns out, Spotcha is what they describe as an amusement buffet, in that you pay a fixed price for a certain amount of time, and then you have unlimited play on all the forms of entertainment they have on that floor. I had to take a bit of a gamble here because my only guide that I knew there was arcade machines was from that map, and I guess at the very least, at least I'd be able to play unlimited table tennis and darts. I paid my fee and went up the escalator, and my face immediately lit up with joy. There they all were, all the older arcade machines from the late 90s and 2000s. And, best of all, they were all unlimited play. I had a pretty big fangirl moment here with just some of the arcade machines they actually had featured, so let's have a look at them through a montage. This is what intrigued me to come to this arcade in the first place, and this is F-Zero AX, the arcade counterpart to the GameCube's F-Zero GX. What's cool is that you can actually bring in your GameCube memory card and unlock the arcade exclusive tracks through this machine. The game is just as good as the GameCube counterpart, and it's enriched by the seat, which twists and turns at high speeds. The machine even has seat belts, so you better buckle in. So what I'm playing here is Virtualon, it's Sega's 1v1 mech fighting game. 
and it is on the Sega Saturn and the Sega Dreamcast, but I even think it's on the Xbox 360 these days. Um, but the problem with those are, if you just use the regular controller, it is a bit of a mess in the controls department. That's why you need these babies. They're called the Twin Sticks. You can actually get them for most of those consoles, but they usually do fetch a decent price, or you have to import them, like, come to Japan, I guess. I'm gonna get virtual on a go. I'm, I'm alright at the game. I was about to play Time Crisis until the machine next to it caught my attention. Armadillo Racing? Amazing. You have to roll a trackball and blaze at high speeds as an armadillo. What's not to love? There are so many games in here, it's absolutely ridiculous. Now if you excuse me, I have a date with Destiny. Because I purchased free time, I could actually stay at that arcade until I think about 5am in the morning, but after about 6 hours, I decided it was time to get dinner and move on, although I already want to go back, and I can safely say that this is my favourite arcade in Japan so far. The Spotcha system is not exclusive to this particular round one, and so if you go online and do a bit of research, you can actually find out that a few other round ones do offer the Spotcha service. 